Welcome to the Anime Audiophile Podcast. Please like and subscribe for more. Thank you. Sasuke Ritsuden, Byuchiha Descendants and the Heavenly Stardust Chapter 5 Four days after the Prime Minister's Messenger Fandal's visit to Zansel, Sakura received a message from Kakashi by a hawk. The Prime Minister of the land of Ridaku had joined with Queen Marina and invaded the village of Negar. In the face of this, the Queen's younger brother Prince Nanira had decided to stage a coup d'etat and seize power. Kakashi was planning to help the prince. Fandel had come to ask Zansel about progress. And Zansel had replied that they would be able to send firepower right away. From this new message, she had to assume that Zansel's firepower was to support the Prime Minister's troops. But where exactly was he hiding all this force in this observatory, so far away in the north? She summed up what she knew of the current situation in a reply to Kakashi and affixed the paper to the leg of a hawk that wore a red piece of fabric tied around it. The hawk squawked unhappily, insisting on at least a single night's rest, so she let it peck at a scrap of dried meat as a reward to soothe its displeasure and appease it before sending it back to Kakashi. Then Sakura headed for the cafeteria. It was just supper time. The line of prisoners with trays stretched out into the hallway. She wanted to tell Sasuke what Kakashi had said, but she couldn't see him in the hallway or in the cafeteria itself. Ignoring the stares of the rear prisoners, she sat at a table near the window and propped her chin up in her hands. None of this made any sense. The relationship between Zansel and the Prime Minister. The firepower Zansel mentioned. The location of the Ultra Particles. The meaning behind Map of the Heavens and its ink paintings of the Twelve. Constellations. The chickens and the pile of rocks against the wall that Sasuke had discovered in the basement. She couldn't piece all the fragments together to see a whole picture. Maybe the basement didn't even matter. Maybe Zansel just kept chickens and collected stone sculpture as a hobby. But then again, no. That couldn't have been it. I don't get it, she moaned and threw herself back in her chair. You mind if I sit here, Doc? asked an older man from the other side of the table. She shook her head. No, go ahead. It was Gano, Sasuke's cellmate, the strange man whose hobby was painting pictures on his toenails. After moistening his throat with the watered-down tea from the blackened samovar, Gano turned his eyes to the view outside. Sun's already setting, hmm? Mm hmm, Sakura agreed and stared at the rays of the sun falling on the table. The red light poured in from low in the sky and was so sharp and clear she could almost hold it in her hand. For a long time, I thought that sunset meant that the sun was going down, Gano said lazily, still looking out the window. But that's not actually it, I guess. The ground we're riding on here goes and spins on its own and moves away from the sun. I always figured it was the sky that was moving. I was surprised when I learned that too, she said. We're so quick to think that people are the center of things, hmm? He smiled gently and turned his eyes on her hand. You're wearing a ring today, document. Are you married? I am. She nodded. But the ring gets in the way while I'm working, so I often take it off. Working up in a place like this, I guess you don't get home too. Often. Well... The truth was, if she wasn't working way out here, she'd almost never get to see her husband. What kind of man's your husband? Gano continued. He's very kind. She wanted to reply with something innocuous and honest, but she found herself wanting to say more and added, and he's very pure. Knowing that Gano didn't know who her husband was, it was easy. To let herself keep talking fondly. Sometimes, he's too blunt and it makes things tough for him and everyone who knows him. His thinking can jump from one extreme to the other. But I like that about him. And he's very attractive physically, but he has absolutely zero interest in that. I love that about him. Although it does worry me sometimes. Oh yeah? That Sasuke's a lucky guy. Thud. The hands propping up her chin slid away, and Sakura's face hit the table. Gano chuckled. What? 
H H how do you? She stammered. Oh, I mean, my husband's not, I mean. It's him, hm? Geno nodded, convinced. He used to sit here and stare out the window all the time. But he hasn't been doing that lately. Not since you came. I always wondered what it was he was looking at, but now, I finally get it. He was wondering when that tree was going to bloom. Be bloom? Sakura said. No, um, that's, anyway, why would you think Sasuke is my husband? Your hair is such a pretty color. You gotta take care of it. Gano beamed like a father giving a child a pinwheel and left without further explanation. Alone again at the table, Sakura and her head were full of question. Marks. What does my hair have to do with anything? Confused, she turned her gaze out the window and saw out the tree that Gano had mentioned. There was just one tree with flowers. On clipped branches a single layer of small flowers bloomed. The light pink petals were so tiny they threatened to disappear from sight if she blinked. She stared at them for a while and when she finally realized what Gano meant she turned right up to her ears. Sasuke had been waiting for the sakura to bloom. The tree wasn't actually a sakura cherry tree, but a type of almond that bloomed at high altitudes. Which only made sense. Sakura wouldn't bloom in a place with a climate like this. After returning to the infirmary, Sakura caught a glimpse of her face. And the metal tongue depressed her and discovered that she was beaming. Maybe Gano had simply gotten the wrong idea but it made her incredibly happy to think that Sasuke had been thinking about her while waiting for the pink flowers to bloom. Sakura had also kept a flower on her desk at work for the same reason. She had picked up the camellia, now with its stem heartlessly tucked into a glass bottle where it had fallen from the hedge in the courtyard. Camellias always reminded her of Sasuke. It was a flower with only two options, bloom at the tip of the stem or drop off to the ground. She thought the flower's determined instinct was exactly like Sasuke's. The bottle with the camellia shone a lovely orange, wrapped in the light of the setting sun. Soon, the sun would sink completely. No. I guess it's actually us that sets, like Gano said. Even though she knew this fact, she still felt in her heart that it was the sun doing the setting. I've got no right to be a doctor, thinking like this, she thought with a wry smile. For scientists and that group included doctors it was essential to eschew subjectivity and look at things objectively. And yet here she was. In that sense, it hadn't been particularly scientific of Tatar to connect the arrangements of the stars with tanuki and monkeys in Map of the Heavens. The stars may have looked like a tanuki or a turtle when viewed from the ground, but there was no astronomical meaning in that. Still... Sakura felt like she could understand a little at least how the astronomer must have felt, connecting star with star and associating the outlines with the shapes of animals. It had to have been the same mindset that led her to talk to the cells she cultivated in petri dishes. Working with them on a daily basis, she felt a fondness for them that led to a sort of playfulness in her. Even if the object of study was something inorganic, a human being was providing observation and subjectivity to the inorganic subject. The signs that Shinobi wove were no doubt named after the constellations for the same reason. In front of her chest, Sakura brought her hands together in the sign for rat. The shape her hands made had absolutely no connection with the actual animal. But the sign needed a name of some kind, so the Shinobi of the long distant past had given this combination the title. Rat for the sake of convenience. Since there were twelve basic hand combinations used in weaving signs, the twelve animals of the zodiac fit perfectly. Sakura abruptly lifted her gaze. Twelve zodiac signs. Twelve? Ah. Oh. Sakura stood up forcefully enough to knock her chair over and dashed out of the infirmary. The lower part of the evening sky was already violet, bits of clouds scattered here and there. Sasuke was sitting on the brick roof doing his job for the day, collecting apricots. When they get their sights set on you the guards always end up nabbing me too. Ah, I'm so tired, Gigi sighed as he heartlessly reached out for a branch from the pile in front of him. 
He neatly twisted the stem of the mature small fruit and carefully pulled it free so as not to damage it, and then held up the free fruit so Sasuke could polish its dusty skin with one hand. He and Gigi were on the roof of the main building, in the middle of a job the guards had ordered them to stay and do after regular working hours were over. It was only natural that Sasuke had been nominated for the overtime, given that he was a target for the guards' harassment, and having often been paired with Sasuke in the past, Gigi had been chosen as a bonus fruit harvester. They brought this tree up from the capital, huh? Gigi remarked. Apricots don't grow well way out here. I guess. Sasuke nodded. They must bring new ones from the palace every so often. We've never gotten apricots in our meals. Suppose only the director and the guards get to eat them. Damn it. Eat one now, Sasuke said. He picked out a nicely shaped fruit from the mountain of apricots he polished and tossed it into his mouth. Listen you, quit that, Gigi said. You'll catch a beating if the guards find out. Sasuke let Gigi's warning go in one ear and out the other as he crushed the fruit with his teeth. Maybe because of the climate, it was quite tart, which suited Sasuke's palate nicely as he didn't much care for sweets. Gigi stood up, spread out his arms, and stretched to give his stiff shoulders some relief. Yeah. Eyes drawn upward by his partner's movement, Sasuke looked out over the scene below. They were deep in the mountains, and he could see the ridge lines of bare rock crossing back and forth in a kind of arabesque, like a diorama made only with sand. Devoid of color, the view continued like this as far as the eye could see. Or so he thought. But then he noticed on the ground at the base of the cliff on which the observatory stood an orange magatama bead. No. A magatama wouldn't reflect the sky so neatly. Is there a lake near here? he asked, and Gigi followed his gaze out to the magatama. Oh, the lake. It's pretty small, so loads of fellows don't even know it's there. Super clear, but no fish in it, meaning no one has any reason to go all the way down there. I heard it's a crater filled with rainwater. Meteor hit that spot way back in the old days. A meteor. Sasuke stepped toward the edge of the roof and peered at the lake below. Outlined by pear-like curves, the lake water highlighted the sunset glow and sat there, still against the landscape, reflecting the tufts of clouds like a mirror. It was almost as if someone had scooped up the evening sky with a spoon and poured it into a hollow in the earth. Sky? At this time of day, it gets a little reddish. But take a look at it during the day, and it's a perfect blue, very pretty. It's so clear you almost can't tell which one's the sky and which one's the lake, Gigi said, nearly in reverie. Gigi. Sasuke pushed the apricot branch in his hand at his work partner. My stomach hurts. I'm leaving. You take care of the rest. Huh? Gigi gaped at him. I'll take your next shift in the kitchen. He had no sooner spoken the words than he was turning on his heel and marching away. Hey. Where are you going? He ignored Gigi's protests. He had to tell Sakura right away that he had solved one of the mysteries of Map of the Heavens. Oh. Sasuke ran into Sakura when he rounded the corner on the staircase landing. They had both quenched their auras, so they very nearly slammed into each other. But the two shinobi were gifted with such impeccable reflexes that they each took a step back before the collision could happen. Sasuke, perfect timing. Sakura said excitedly and took his arm. I figured out the mystery of Map of the Heavens. What? He stared at her and she dragged him into an empty room. Once the door was closed behind them, Sakura said quietly, Do you remember? That bit about how the Sage of Six Paths split the Ultra Particles into two and in one half in the star that never strays and the other in the sky that fell to the earth? Sasuke nodded. It was in the text that Kakashi had sent them. Half of the Ultra Particles were hidden in the sky that fell to the earth and the other half in the star that never strays. To discover these locations, revel with the map of the heavens. The Sage of Six Paths is the originator of Chakra. We should assume he used ninjutsu to hide the ultra particles, and you need signs to release ninjutsu. 
That means that hidden in the map of the heavens are the signs to get at the ultra particles. Sakura pulled a scrap of paper out of her pocket and set it on top of the desk. It was covered in her handwriting. First, take a look at this. I numbered the zodiac signs and the constellations rearranged in chronological order. One rat slash tanuki. Two ox slash cat. Three tiger slash turtle. Four rabbit slash monkey. Five dragon slash white horse. Six snake slash frog and slug. Seven horse slash tree trunk. Eight goat slash cow. Nine monkey slash watch fire. Ten rooster slash giant. Eleven dog slash shepherd. Twelve pig slash elderly person. I see. Twelve zodiac signs and twelve constellations. Sasuke nodded in understanding as he ran his eyes over the words on the page. So the shepherd and the old person had been added to the ten animals to bulk up the number of constellations to twelve in order to match the number of the signs of the zodiac. But this alone doesn't tell us what the specific signs are. There's one more hint, she told him. Star lines. Star lines? Sasuke was still trying to catch on. Reveling with the map of the heavens. Don't you think that's a strange way of putting it? Map of the heavens has nothing but ink paintings in it, so I mean, play with what? My guess is that the Star Lines picture cards originally went with the map of the heavens. I mean, the box the cards are in is way too big. It has too much extra space to be just for those little cards. Indeed, the box was fairly large. Large enough for the oversized map of the heavens to fit inside nicely. The strongest hand in Star Lines is Star, the second strongest is Earth, she continued. I think that star is likely describing the star that never strays, and earth the sky that fell to the earth. Makes sense. Sasuke turned his mind back to the match he'd watched between Sakura and Penzilla. The star hand is made of the card's white horse, shepherd, cat, watchfire, giant, and turtle. So if we leave the signs of the constellations corresponding to those cards, we'll be able to find the ultra particles? White horse, shepherd, Cat, Watchfire, Giant, and Turtle the signs contained in the six picture cards that made up the star hand would then be Dragon, Dog, Ox, Monkey, Rooster, and Tiger, according to Sakura's notes. For Earth, it was Ox, Monkey, Rat, Snake, Tiger, and Pig. These were the signs they needed to obtain the Ultra Particles. That solves the mystery of the constellations. It's clear what we should do. Sakura ran her finger over the page of notes with a serious look on her face. But I don't know where we should do it. What exactly are the sky that fell to the earth and the star that never strays pointing to? I've got a guess as to the sky part. Right, I guess we... What? Sakura jerked her head up. Sasuke had dropped this bombshell bit of info so casually that Sakura only belatedly understood what he actually said. You got guess? Sakura asked, stunned. Her eyes were wide with surprise, and he looked back at her, his own face expressionless. I'll come get you tonight after lights out, he said and quickly left the room. The sky was clear that night, so the stars were bright and visible. Sasuke rapped on the window of the infirmary at the promised time. Come on, he said and jumped down from the second floor to the ground. He turned and looked up at her impatiently. Not knowing what he was up to, Sakura took a second to remove her white lab coat and then jumped out of the window after him. Killing their auras, they went over the wall and started down the cliff behind the observatory. After a few minutes of descending the rocky face, their field of view opened up. A small lake in a crater appeared up ahead of them. Sakura stopped and gasped. Wow! The calm surface of the water reflected the night sky perfectly. The particles of light dotting the black mirror was so beautiful that Sakura stood rooted to the spot and forgot to breathe. I guess it's called Sage Lake, after the Sage of Six Paths. The sky that fell to the earth. If that literally means a starry sky on earth, then there likely isn't a place that hits the mark better than this one, Sasuke explained. 
Sakura barely even heard him. The flat blue lake water embraced the entire night sky, and the moon with its rabbit-shaped shadow dropped an anchor in the bottom of the lake, shimmering at the edge of the shore. Everything present there was quiet and calm, making the actual reality feel mysterious and ethereal. To think that a place like this was right behind the observatory. She'd had few chances to leave the infirmary, so not only had she not known there was such a lake out here, she hadn't even realized that the sky above her was filled with such lovely stars every night. It's beautiful. Her eyes shone like a child's. Sasuke watched her with a slight smile. I wish we could show it to Sarada. Mm. Sakura nodded. She's been interested in astronomy lately. She went to the science fair at the research institute with Eno and... Then the other day... She's obsessed with reading about the moon and the stars. She is? Sasuke touched his wife's hand. Exposed to the outside air, her fingers had gotten cold, and he felt like they were more slender than he remembered. He was certain there were plenty of moments that he missed by not being with her. Even without a ring, even if they couldn't always be together, the fact that Sakura was his wife and his family was never going to change. He was able to think like this thanks to a lesson from a good friend a long time ago. The most important thing was the bond they shared. He had a connection with Sakura that not even distance could touch. Even if he couldn't see her every day, she was his precious partner. However, although he honestly believed this, he would abruptly be hit with a wave of sadness from time to time. Especially when he was on a lengthy mission and couldn't return to the village for long periods. Not being able to hear each other's voice when they wanted to, not being together when they wanted to touch each other. Maybe it would be easier for them if they had something physical to hold on to, if they could see the bond they shared in an object like a ring. Sakura, he started. Do you want a ring? Not one made with chakra. When we get back to the village. A regular one. Correctly understanding Sasuke's intention despite the clumsiness of his question, Sakura thought for a moment. Hmm. I have wanted one at times. But a ring probably doesn't suit my hands. She smiled slightly and held her hands out in the moonlight. Her hands dry from constant washing, were the proof that Sakura had helped so many patients. At the same time, they were also Sasuke's pride. He loved the suddenly serious look in her eyes when she headed to work, and the deft movements of her hands as she treated patients, and the way she rolled up her sleeves a bit before she let her chakra flow. Sakura would always make notes for herself after conducting an examination in addition to making up the patient's chart. Every time he witnessed the passion she had for learning, he felt that she also was doing everything she could for the village, but in a way that was different from how he did it, and that made him happy. I. Staring at the lake before them, Sasuke said slowly, I've never worried that someone might come along and take my place while I was away. Not once. Sakura nodded and waited for him to continue. But sometimes, I get frustrated. Like when I come home for the first time in a while and Sarada's gotten taller or your hairstyle's changed. I feel the same sometimes, she replied quietly. Like, when did Sasuke get those crow's feet around his eyes? Stuff like that. I have crow's feet. He looked at her in surprise. When you smile, just faint once. They're fine when you're scowling. You never change, he said and put a hand to her cheek. You could have more wrinkles. What? Sakura laughed, looking not displeased, and lowered her gaze. Where's this coming from? Did someone say something to you? No, I just wanted to tell you. Really? She smiled. I understand you only too well, Sasuke. We're fine. I wish I could always be with Sakura like this, he thought from the bottom of his heart. But the fact was they couldn't be. Not with their different responsibilities and roles to play. The people of the village needed Sakura, and Sarada had dreams that she'd never be able to realize outside of the village of Konohagakure. 
and Sasuke didn't know any way to be useful to the village besides helping Naruto from the shadows by breaking new ground on missions. Okay. Sakura pulled Starline's cards from her pocket. The six cards that made the Earth Hand. Let's hurry and get these Ultra Particles and go back to the village. Right. Sasuke nodded. Sakura began to move her hands, referring to the images on the cards. Sasuke's eyes stopped on the motif on the back of the picture cards. A lizard that resembled Minnow coiled around a rock. Hadn't there also been a similar picture on the cover of Map of the Heavens? Why a picture of a lizard? he asked abruptly. Huh? Sakura looked up at him, eyebrows raised. There's no lizard in the Map of the Heavens constellations. Looking at the back of the card, Sakura nodded, as if understanding. It's probably not a lizard in a rock. It's a dragon and a meteor. A dragon and a meteor? A long time ago, a lot of dragons used to live around this area. They supposedly went extinct because of a meteor impact. That was tens of thousands of years ago, though, so probably no connection with the Sage of Six Paths. Now that she mentioned it, there had been a note about how fossils could be dug out of certain geological layers in the ground here in that book that Penzilla had been reading. Fossils? The basement room with its massive rock fragments flashed through Sasuke's mind. What if they were dragon fossils that the prisoners were made to dig up? And what if the... Orochimaru who made off with this country's books was the same snake man that Sasuke knew? Sakura brought her hands together in front of her chest. As she checked the pictures on the six cards, she slowly wove the signs one after the other. The dinosaurs that went extinct because of a meteor. The chickens and fossils collected in the basement. And the jutsu developed by Orochimaru Editensii. Lining these three elements up, Sasuke felt a shiver run down his spine. What if Sansil's aim was to restore the dragons from the fossils? Using DNA extracted from the dragon remains, he sacrifices chickens, their direct descendants, to bring the dragons back to life. On paper, it was plenty possible. The starry sky suddenly vanished from the lake. The surface of the water began to churn. He lifted his gaze with a gasp just as Sakura finished weaving the last sign beside him. The water flashed, and a pillar of light shot up from the bottom of the lake, so dazzlingly bright he could hardly keep his eyes open. Slowly rising up in the center of that pillar was a bamboo vessel sealed with many overlapping protective warts. Are the ultra particles inside of this? When Sakura reached for the vessel, half in disbelief, the pillar of light abruptly vanished, and the lake before them was placid once again. She timidly touched the ward-laden surface and then yanked her hand back. An unbelievable amount of chakra. What? He touched the vessel lightly, which was enough to make his skin tingle with a strange pressure. Only a true master could imbue warts. With this amount of chakra. He and Sakura couldn't simply pop the vessel open to see what was inside, but he felt pretty confident that it contained the ultra particles sealed away by the Sage of Six Paths. They had finally completed their mission to obtain the ultra particles. However, Sasuke's head was full of something else. Sakura, he said suddenly. Physically, what's the difference between a dragon and a lizard? Huh? Sakura asked in reply, looking baffled, as she gripped the ultra particles container. This question had nothing to do with anything. What about dragons? I want to know about the physical characteristics of dragons and lizards. Oh, okay. I guess the biggest difference from reptiles is that the rear legs of dragons grow straight down from their bodies. Lizards, their legs stick out to the sides, and they sort of crawl along busily on all fours. But dragons were bipedal and maintained their balance by shifting their center of gravity back and forth. Sasuke recalled the time he fought Minnow. Long head thrust forward, tail waving as he ran. Minnow was definitely bipedal, shifting the center of gravity back and forth. Minnow wasn't a lizard, he was a dragon brought back to life with Editensii. This answered several questions Sasuke had had about Minnow. 
His Jinjutsu hadn't worked on the lizard because Minnow was already being controlled by someone else, with Editensei. Sansel was collecting fossils and chickens in the basement. He wasn't going to stop at Minnow. He intended to reanimate even more dragons. Sakura. I'm going back. To the observatory, he started to say, and in that moment, there was a roar that made him wonder if the moon had cracked in half. He whirled his head around to look up the slope and saw a part of the observatory enveloped in a massive dust cloud. What was that? Sakura cried. An explosion? No. Not an explosion, he replied. One massive creature after the other leaped out from inside the dust cloud and up into the sky. Wings of skin like a bat's, beaks sharp as spears. And enormous claws just like minnows. Are those dragons? Sakura gasped. How? They're supposed to be extinct. Sansel brought them back with Editensei. Sasuke had realized the truth a beat too late. Sansel was using Editensei to bring ancient dragons back to life in the modern age. End of chapter 5 Thank you for listening. Remember to like and subscribe for lots more.